Hi, this is Pete Bush once again, Beatles original drummer, and you're listening to uh, Joe Johnson's Beatle Brunch. Hi, this is Paul McCartney, and you're listening to Beatle Brunch with Joe Johnson. This is John Lennon. Hi, this is Cynthia Lennon. And I'm very happy to be here on Joe Johnson's Beatle Brunch. Hello, this is George Harrison. And if you want a good story on the Beatles, stay tuned to the station. Hello, everybody. This is Ringo Starr. You're listening to Beatle Brunch with Joe Johnson. Yes, I get by with a little help from my friends, with a little help from my friends. Hey there, it's Joe Johnson on the Rock and Romance Cruise, and I just met my best friend, a, a fellow hey. Beatle fan, Leo Sayre. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I listened to all your records in the 70s and all throughout the days, and uh, but I never realized the connection to the Beatles. You're yeah, um, um, yeah, it goes back uh, all, all through my first manager when he invited me the first time, uh, you know, to take up the management. The first day, he took me to this very swanky restaurant in the West End of London, and a kind of private restaurant, and a door opened, and out walked Paul McCartney. You can imagine the shock, you know, I mean, I was a real greenhorn at that time. I, I didn't know, I was like, how do I handle this? And he, he said, ask me any advice you like, you know, in that <laughs> lovely, creamy new Liverpool accent. And I just kept quizzing him, said, what microphone do you use? Oh, I'm not going to tell you that. Well, you know, how do you do this? No, nah, I'm not going to tell you that. No, you know, he didn't want to give away anything, but he said, I'll give you one piece of advice. Don't cut your hair, <laughs> meaning hair, yeah. hair in, uh. in, in Liverpoolese and um, Liverpool Liverpoolian. And um, I kind of, uh, you know, it was very impressive, you know, to meet him and everything. But I kind of came out of it thinking, well, he didn't really tell me anything, you know. I mean, I don't, not, none the wiser. But many, many years later, when Paul was doing Wings with Linda and, and all those guys, McCullough and all the boys, um, I was in Los Angeles and I was actually going to go to the Wings concert. And I just arrived and I was really jet lagged. And we always used to go to Tower Records, you know, on Sunset. Oh, yeah, 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 it was yeah, the yeah. shrine, you know. So we were, we were walking down in LA and, and um, I, I'm just walking out and a car pulls beside me as I walk down the road, literally a bit jet lagged and dizzy and everything. And a guy says, get in, get in. And I'm thinking, hello, what is this? Someone's picking me up on the street. And it was Paul McCartney. And in a little Mercedes, just by himself. Mm -hmm. And I said, he said, where are you going? I said, Tower. He said, Tower too. So he wow. said, let's go together. And he's, I sat in the car and he said, you remembered then? And I went, what? How many years had it been? Uh, this is, uh, yeah, maybe um, 30 first, years or so. No, 20 something years, when you know. told you the Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, he said, you, you, you remembered then? And I went, what? And, I, and he said, you didn't cut your hair? Uh, and, I, and I just said something, went, of course, that's what you told me. He said, yeah, I only gave you one piece of advice and you followed it. So you did well. So then we... Um, we went to the store and uh, he said, right, okay, here is what we do. You buy 20 records for me and I'll buy 20 records for you and I'll see you in five minutes. And then we went in the store and hardly anybody actually spotted us. They went, oh yeah, Paul McCartney, yeah. Okay, Leo said, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it was really funny. And so we, and out of it, you know, we, we, we ended up becoming really good friends because we shared our collections of records. Mm -hmm. I turned him on to gospel. He turned me on to a lot of classical music and, you know, really beautiful guitar music and things, you know. So well, the good. one thing I know is that you obviously had hits on the charts at the same time that Wings yes, did. Paul yes, 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 absolutely. Records yeah. were competing with you, well, in, you feel like dancing and all your... In hits. 1975, uh, I recorded Let It Be right. um, and put it out as a Christmas single. You know, because I, I fancy doing a cover. bells and everything? No, no, no. It was pretty straightforward. Yeah. And we had Sue and Sonny, the backing singers of Joe Cocker on it, and a really great band. And, and, you know, we did a version. And it hit the British charts. It was really good. And Paul later on said, I really loved your version of Let It Be. Wow. And he actually came to me and said, look, I've got a project. There's this Buddy Holly movie coming out. And we're going to have Paul Mc a Buddy Holly day. Mm -hmm. And I'd recorded Raining in My Heart, which we do here in the show. And he put it on the record as well, wow, you know. So awesome. we, we, we've had many interchanges over the years, you know. And um, he's just a super swell guy, really down to earth, no big star bullshit, you know. But that, we know that because yeah. we know him. Yeah. Well, I want to say on behalf of everybody on the Rock and Romance cruise, you really, oh. you really lit the place on fire. Well, it's fantastic. You and and the band is good as well. The, the band is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you're, you're amazing. i got to get you on stage. But, yeah, man. Uh, we'll, it's been a great time. Well, I'd love to come you. back. I, I really would. You we know? would love to have And you we'll back. keep talking about the Beatles and things because I've got a million more stories. I know you do. we got to get you on stage. But I I I better go to work. Talk to Gary because yeah. Gary at Abbey Road on the River, he really needs to be We'll see you, Gary. All the best. Abbey Road on the River sounds good to me. Cheers, Come man. On. <laughs>